Hello, I'm Sharon Williams, your host for Your Family Animal Doctor. If you love animals, giraffes, cheetahs, birds, cats, dogs, even pythons, you'll love our show. As we explore the role your family animal doctor plays in caring for all the animals that surround us. Today, we'll visit Binder Park Zoo in Battle Creek, explore the practice of equine medicine on the farm, take a trip to the Upper Peninsula to see the Miracle of Life exhibit, visit a small animal clinic in Grand Rapids, and finally, we'll visit the College of Veterinary Medicine at Michigan State University. No one can miss the wonder in a child's eyes when they experience the sights and sounds of the animals at the zoo. It takes a special kind of professional to ensure the health of these exotic creatures, great and small. Dr. David Ross of Columbia Hospital for Animals accepts this challenge as consulting veterinarian to Binder Park Zoo in Battle Creek. I look at uh, my work as, um, as part of a whole unit of things. Um, I take care of the medical aspect and I worry about the medical aspect, but that all integrates with the nutritionists that we work with closely. And it certainly um, involves the keepers. John Dynan, Vice President of Collections and Conservation at Binder Park, explains the critical role of a veterinarian in maintaining the health and welfare of zoo animals. The veterinarian is an integral part of the animal management team at Binder Park Zoo or at any zoo. Uh, the welfare and health of the animals is paramount to achieving the mission of conservation, education, and recreation here at the zoo. We do stress preventative medicine through vaccination and nutrition and good husbandry. Most of it is just vaccinations and wormings, making sure they get proper diets and trying to prevent disease rather than trying to treat it because it's very difficult to treat a lot of these animals. Giraffes are not easy to treat. However, emergencies do come up from time to time. We've had incidents where animals had traumatic injuries that uh, if it weren't for the veterinarian, we would have been in a very difficult situation. Treatment provided by Dr. Rost to one of his more exotic patients leads to some new understanding in veterinary medical science. We had an iguana. We were the first zoo to prove in reptiles that they actually do get a vitamin E selenium deficiency and have the same types of problems that mammals, the fact that you and I have with um, a lack of vitamin E and selenium. And uh, it just goes to show how important diet is. And because of that lack in the diet, we had a sick animal. By protecting the health of such a wide variety of species, our children are afforded hours of enjoyment and education. Young people considering a career in veterinary medicine have many opportunities to explore their interests in their own communities. When you're younger, I, I, and I recommend it to lots of kids, get all the experience you can. If it means volunteering at your local zoo, if it means volunteering at your local humane society, means volunteering at your local veterinary clinic, um, go in and do it. Um, there's lots and lots to learn. Um, you can start learning at 12 years of age. I started volunteering at a veterinary clinic at 12 years of age. With over 100 species in his care, Dr. Rost provides regular preventive medical care, as well as treatment of illness and injury to camels, pythons, giraffes, and a recently pregnant cheetah. We had uh, some cheetah cubs born here last year, uh, October 24th, and it was the first time this uh, particular female had ever given birth. She was an inexperienced mother and not able to properly care for the cubs. So it was important that we immediately got veterinary intervention, got the cubs stabilized, and got them on their way to good health. We've had live cheetahs born here, which is extremely rare in captivity. Um, we have done um, oodles of research on reproduction of cheetahs. Um, we work with the National Zoo um, as far as cheetah reproduction goes. Um, and we have done a lots and lots of basic research and just understanding their reproductive cycle. And out of that, we finally got ourselves two live baby cheetahs. We owe our gratitude to Dr. Rost and his fellow veterinarians for their continued role in protecting nature's legacy. Veterinary medicine is equally as important down on the farm as it is at the zoo. Next, we'll visit the farm of Russ and Ruth Mauby in Hickory Corners. 
Their family animal doctor provides continuing veterinary care to some very special creatures in the Mobby's life. Practicing veterinary medicine in the field gives new meaning to the notion of a good bedside manner. Veterinarians who treat large animals must attend to their patients wherever they are found, whether in the barn or in the field. The mare here is a very special member of our family. Her name is Bas Keloa. She's an Arabian mare that was born here 21 years ago, uh, this summer. And she had a great show record, very special pedigree, and, and became very valuable in Arabian circles. So when she was eight years old, I sold her at a fancy sale out in uh, Arizona. And then, of course, the Arabian horse market changed, and she got older, and I began to think, wouldn't it be wonderful to have this mare back? Because she was special in every way and uh, began to try to make that happen, was unsuccessful. When Russ Mobby announced his retirement from the Kellogg Foundation, the entire community developed a special celebration to thank him for his many years of service. They called it a day at the farm with Ruth and Russ, and held it at the Kellogg Arena with a most unusual surprise for Russ. And at the conclusion of that, as a gift to Ruth and me, they brought back our beautiful mayor, Basque Loa. And I was completely surprised. Ruth was in on this secret, but they led Basque Loa into the Kellogg Arena with the big crowd, and she behaved beautifully. And I, of course, uh, jumped off the stage and, and ran over, threw my arms around her neck, and, and then whispered, Basque Loa, let's shake hands. And up came the foot. I'd taught her that as a, as a baby, and we'd always shaken hands but it had been 11 years, and she remembered. After the mare was home, uh, we checked her out here just to make sure she was still in, in good health, and it was shortly thereafter that I think Russ began to think about possibly breeding this mare, uh, so we, we did a reproductive check. We ultrasounded the mare and, and checked uh, to make sure that everything looked normal, and at that point, uh, Russ made the decision to to take her to have her bread. May 2nd, the filly who's with her here uh, was born. Her name is First Star. I've had a lot of foals here on the farm, but this is the first time that the, the daughter had really exactly the same face markings as, as Mama. So they look very much alike and very special. Uh, first Star was born at 645 on a Friday morning. We, of course, uh, called our family doctor and Gary was out here by 8 o'clock uh, in follow-up. A healthy foal, a healthy mare, and everything went beautifully. Building a good relationship with the owner is equally as important as attending to the needs of the patient. It's great that, that he's a part of a group of partners at Dick Monroe Veterinary Clinic, so that when Gary is away, they have 24-hour coverage, and, and I can call uh, his partner. If Gary's not available, his partners are on duty, they have access to the records. My experience is if you call at 3 o'clock on a Sunday morning, the partner who's on duty will call back within 15 minutes, and if need be, will come out. If it's an emergency, will come out. So it's a tremendous relationship. Its emphasis is on the health of the animals, uh, but they are very responsive then when there's a special problem, a special need. The passion and the commitment to veterinary medicine, I believe, begins when you're very young. First of all, you have to have a love for animals, but you also have to have interest in, in the people, and that's something that's a unique combination, I believe, in, in veterinary medicine. The, the fact that you have to have a love for animals as well as a love for people and, and the relationships with them. I think it's a partnership. At least I regard it as that. I regard Gary very much as a partner. The challenges of equine medicine and large animal veterinary care require skilled practitioners with state-of-the-art equipment to deliver optimum care. Later in this show, we'll take a trip to Grand Rapids to visit a small animal clinic and to Lansing to Michigan State University. But first, let's take a trip up north, across the Mackinac Bridge to the Upper Peninsula State Fair at Escanaba 
and to the Miracle of Life exhibit. It's one of the fair's most popular attractions. This fascinating educational exhibit features a variety of farm animals, including chickens popping out of their shells, and cows, pigs, and sheep, all about to give birth during the fair. And that's the challenging part, according to Escanaba veterinarian, Dr. Jim Boydston. The way we obtain our pigs and our cows is by talking with local farmers in the area and having breeders who have animals or do at this time bring them in. So there is a fair amount of logistics to get the thing set up, to get a hold of the people and line up the cows to come in. Fourteen veterinarians, along with six Michigan State veterinary students, take turns in this around-the-clock venture, caring for these future mothers and their babies as they are born. They come up and they spend the week and we have a revolving schedule for them and they, they're here 24 hours a day, some of them. I'm on call at all times. We have this year 14 other veterinarians in the UP. We're real happy for that, that we're getting people who uh, are taking interest in it. And uh, we feel real fortunate because I think the exhibit has turned out real well and we get real good reviews from the fair board and from everybody that comes in. Uh, normally when we have a birth, we're running three to 500 people gathered around to see what they can see. If we get that many, they don't all get a good look, but they get an idea and at least they've witnessed a the birth. Of course, the most often question is, how soon is she going to have it, Doc? And that one we tell them, especially if it's the parents, I said, do you remember, do you know how soon your wife is going to have the baby or how soon the, uh, you are going to have the baby? But I said, we can have some parameters that will give us a pretty good idea. But as far as my telling you to go down the midway and come back in 20 minutes and you're going to see the old birth, it doesn't work that way. We're still dealing with nature and we do it. We try to be as much natural as possible, but some of these we just plain waited on and do much the same as a farmer would do so they can see birth completely natural if possible. From the looks of the birth announcements, it appears the Miracle of Life exhibit was a success again this year. Responsible pet owners know the importance of routine veterinary care in maintaining the health of a faithful companion. Next, we'll visit Dr. Ed Farnham's Small Animal Clinic in Grand Rapids. With his associate, Dr. Dave Durham, Dr. Farnham sees a variety of small companion animals. It looks as though some animals don't mind visiting the doctor. Sometimes a visit to the clinic is just for grooming, an important part of pet care. Others are being cared for while their owners are away. And here they get lots of love and lots of play. For Olivia, an eclectus parrot, it's time for a routine physical. Olivia came in to see us the other day for just a general health checkup to make sure that she was doing well. Wellness exams are real important as part of um, a normal checkup and wellness program for uh, for these types of patients. They don't require annual vaccinations, but uh, we do advocate a wellness program which involves an annual physical and hello. periodic blood samples. Well, hello. Periodic blood samples are help us to understand the database on these animals so that we know what is normal for their kidney, their liver, and their pancreas function. It looks as if Olivia passed her examination with flying colors. Sunshine, the parakeet, is also in today for a physical. His owner sees a problem with his tail feathers. Well, his tail feathers are getting a little um, messed up, I think, from playing with some of the other babies in the cage. But overall, I think he seems good and healthy.